how should you respond to this digital age that's emerging all around us? Just a few quick points as we head to a close. First thing is you've got to do things that computers can't do. You can't just do things that computers could do, but do it with a smile. You as a human being will be replaced unless you are doing things that computers can't do. So the big question is, what can computers not do? Well, you know, we live in a high-tech world. Computers are not so good at the high touch, though. I mean, if computers had their way, this is probably what a bank would look like. Hi, I just want to make a deposit. Do you have your account number? Right here. Lean forward, please. Hmm? Ah! What is this? It's our new customer tracking system. It has your account number and barcode. It speeds you right through the line. Now what? That line over there. Feel like banks are getting a bit impersonal? What's a holdup? I hate it when these things don't scan. So the first thing computers can't do is relationships, is that human touch, that human connection. If you want to be better as a professional, you have to build a relational aspect into what you do. Yes, you need a bit of efficiency, but that's a given. Everybody else in this room and all the people who didn't bother to come today are aiming for efficiency. Yes, you have to get the stuff right. Of course you do. Otherwise, don't even bother playing. But if you want to win the game, you've got to go a step more, a step beyond, and relationships are at the heart of it. This is true for every professional. Let me prove it for another professional, and then hopefully you'll see the application to your industry. A while ago, I woke up with an exceptionally sore throat. Not just a cough, not just that something had gone badly wrong. So you make an appointment, you rush yourself off to the doctor, you don't mess around with your health if you're trying to live to 150 years old. After waiting much longer than you should wait in the doctor's room, eventually you get in to see the doctor. And what's the first thing the doctor does? He sits you down, says, what's wrong with you? I say, I've got a sore throat. So what does the doctor do next? A whole lot of people over here, Kevin did exactly this. Ah, are you guys I, I like, like a medical set of... <laughs> I'm just saying, my doctor studied seven years to know that, and you like, just like that. Anyway, no, you're absolutely right. I like, ah, looked in my throat. He says, ooh, so it looks a little bit red in there. I said, could have told you that. It feels a little bit red. Then he goes, starts looking in my ears. This feels to me like what I do when my car breaks. I check the oil, I check the water, I kick the tires. Now I don't know what to do next. He checks my throat, he checks my ears, he checks my eyes. Hopefully he works out what's going on. But it's nothing there. It's none of those things. It's something more sinister. So my doctor has to do a blood test. Now all the other stuff I could have done. By the way, it's been proven that your smartphone is a much better medical device than a stethoscope. The very icon of being a doctor, the stethoscope, is being replaced by smartphones. If you hold your phone against your chest and breathe in and out and take a recording, an audio recording of that breathing in and out, you have done something better than the stethoscope for a number of reasons. First of all, it's better quality to listen to. Secondly, we can keep it and compare it to two weeks' time. We're not relying on your doctor's memory. Thirdly, we can email it to the pulmonary specialist in Venice who can check it out online without having to see you. And fourthly, and maybe more significantly, you can probably just upload it to Chests R Us and get them to do an audio scan of it with no human being involved and send you back probably a free report on what's wrong with your chest. In all seriousness, you can do that. But when we get to something that's a little bit more detailed, that needs a blood test, we've got to have a professional, right? How many of your doctors have ever done a blood test on you? Ever done a blood test? Are you sure? Listen to my question. How many of your doctors have ever done the blood test? Yeah, don't lie to me. None of them. Your doctor takes the blood out of your body. In fact, the nurse does. No, the doctor couldn't be bothered. 
And they send it off to a lab, right, where some white-coated technician stands and looks through the microscope, right? This is the clever person in the system, right? Right? No. If you believe that, you've been watching way too much CSI. <laughs> Actually, at the lab is a machine. And they pump your blood into the machine. Boom, 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 boom. 20 minutes later, a report is printed out. They get a courier to deliver it back to your doctor, takes it out of the brown envelope, picks up the phone, and reads it to you. We do not need a human being involved. In fact, we can put the human doctors in any part of the planet. They don't need to be in the same room. They can check our throat and our eyes and our ears all over the internet. They can give us home blood test kits uh, to test ourselves. Uh, we can go on to online medical sites and go through symptoms checks. All of these can be done. So why don't we do it? Well, I'd like to suggest it's probably for one reason and one reason alone. The last thing you want to do is go through a batch of medical tests sitting in front of your laptop and then get this message. <laughs> Don't you love the option? Uh, don't display this option again. Mm. Don't need to know. Or maybe that last one is, please, please let me continue. <laughs> you tell me, what's the difference between a good GP and a great GP these days? Bedside manner, relationship, when I walk into the office, hey, Graham, how are you doing? How's Amy? Or tomorrow morning, a phone call. So there's medications I gave you last night. One of the side effects, stiffness. How do you feel this morning? You all okay? Mm -hmm. Some of you knew I was going. Really. Every now and again, I test my audience, and they always disappoint me. Yeah. <laughs> We can replace almost every professional that currently exists. Lawyers, doctors, engineers, accountants, actuaries, vets, architects, psychologists, and the lot. Almost everything that anybody does, which is selling brain power by the hour, can and will be replaced by a machine. Unless you build relationship into the equation. Maybe the job interview of the future for a professional will look a little bit like this. I need to certify public accountants. <laughs> One senior marketing consultant. <laughs> One chief financial officer. <laughs> A two system programmer. <laughs> oh, baby. But you must speak Java. My whole life. Oh, I do, I do, I do. Oh. That's it for today. Gracias. <laughs> also available on YouTube, by the way. It's called The Job, if you want to get it. You know what? Some of you are, in fact, very good at doing this. In fact, some of you do what you do because you love doing this. Do more of it. Some of you started your businesses doing this. But you know what? In the last few years, the squeeze has been on, right? You've had to take more clients on. Business efficiency, I think it's called. Wrong era. Now you don't give as much relational and personal connection as you used to do. Some of you are using computers 
to do the personal thing. You got the form letters, you got the databases, and they, they churn out those emails. Every now and again, you forget to replace the dear first name <laughs> with the actual first name. But that's just a slip every now and again. Basically, the system works. Wrong era. Real human relationships. That's what the connection economy will be built on. The successful connection economy. Which means, secondly, that your connections have to be enabled by technology. Many of you believe that technology drives people apart. You're older than 45. Actually, technology is able to bring us together. There is a reason that one billion people have signed up for Facebook. It's not because it's great software. In fact, it's despite the fact that it's pretty bad software. They've done it because it connects. And the technology connects. But then some of the corporates represented in this room ban Facebook. Can't use it during office hours. Why? This is the very best way we as human beings have ever in the history of the world created to connect with other people. And your job in this industry beyond anything else you do is to connect with other people. And then you don't use the greatest piece of technology connecting power we've ever created. Some of you don't have LinkedIn profiles and Twitter accounts yet. I say yet because you have to have them. This is how you connect. If you don't want to be in the connection economy, go and start your retirement already. This is the new world. And the social part of the internet is at the heart of what the internet actually is. Everything else just enables that to happen. This is how we will shop in the future. My daughters will walk into a shop and there will be a salesperson over there who says, oh, good, good morning, how can I help you? And they just kind of speak to the hand moment. Because they will walk over to an item of clothing. They will first of all take a photograph of the barcode, which will link them into the International Barcode Registry and download every single piece of publicly available information about that item of clothing within three seconds for free. Now they know who made it, they know the ethical supply chain, they know its recommended retail price, they know its warranty conditions. Second thing they will do is take a photograph of it and upload it to their Facebook page. Their friends who are constantly online will be asked, what do you think about this? And will begin to instantly be giving like and don't like feedback. If they are shopping at a shop like Topshop, other shops have this, but I know Topshop has an app in which you can pre-program an avatar of yourself. You put in 12 photographs from you, from all sides, they create a video rendering of yourself. You take a scan of the barcode, it will put those clothes onto you in a video, walk you up and down a catwalk, and upload that video to your Facebook page. Your friends can look at you from every angle and tell you whether this item of clothing is worth buying. They will then go on to Amazon or Kalahari or Gumtree and they will see if they can get that same item of clothing cheaper. If they're in exclusive books across the way here, if they can download it cheaper on Kindle, they will stand in exclusive books and buy the book from Amazon and have it delivered to their Kindle in exclusive books. And then the salesperson wonders why he has nothing to contribute. And the financial planner wonders why her 25-year-old clients are not phoning. You've got to connect, and you've got to connect the way they want to connect. By the way, ladies do this much better than men. Employ more women. Thirdly, you can hide nothing. You can hide nothing. Don't even try. This is the era of 100% ethics. Don't even think about it. And the fourth thing you need to be doing in the connection economy is make sense of data for people. Do not send me 10 pages of data. 
I used Twitter, 140 characters, not pages, not paragraphs, characters. Summarize, make sense of the data. That's what I'll pay you for. Not to flood me with data, but to make sense of the data for me, to simplify, to make my life easy. That's what I think Apple does. They're not the best technology company. They're not the most innovative technology company. They don't have the greatest stuff, except that their entire package just works all the time. And it is so gorgeous you want to lick your screen. <laughs> what else do you need to do? Well, I don't know. I'm not an expert in your industry. I don't know your job, the size of your business. I don't know your customers and clients. You do. But we are living in the connection economy. And maybe if my message is anything, it's this. Anybody know where that place is? That specific place. It's Illinois, but there's a specific town in Illinois. Anybody know? It's near Champaign, it's near Springfield. Anybody know? It's the only place I know in the world called Normal. Genuinely. Genuine, it's a city actually called Normal. And uh, this is a long way to go for a punchline, but here it comes. When you finished your day's work in Normal, Illinois, and you head out, and there is an interstate, I think it's I-34, and you head out on the interstate after your day's work, you pass one of these magnificent signs. <laughs> That's where we are right now. Everything you've experienced in your life up until now, all the money you've ever spent on computers and infrastructure, all the things you've learnt, the relationships you've made, all of those have only got you to the starting line. The starting line of a new era. I genuinely do believe this. Maybe the connection economy is not the right phrase for it, I don't know, you make up your own mind. But I do believe with all my heart that we are living at a moment in history that history will look back on and say that's when everything changed. Before and after are fundamentally different. The rules for success and failure are being rewritten as we sit here. The personal, corporate, political, social, organizational and spiritual rules are changing. And we must recognize the era that we live in. Because doing what you've always done just better is not good enough anymore. Using yesterday's logic in tomorrow's world is not good enough anymore. Different times require a different script. What's your different script? What are you deliberately, consciously doing different because it's 2013? Is the rate of change outside your system exceeding the rate of change inside your system. Because if it is, you are becoming a dinosaur. Speed up the rate of change inside, not just by doing more of what you've always done, but by looking at the new era that's emerging. Do new things. Do different things. What a wonderful time to be alive. I don't think this is scary at all. I think it's remarkable. A blank page in history. We get to write the story. Are you ready? Are you ready for the connection economy? Thank you.